welcome to Bharata First. You're watching Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Before I proceed, let me ask you, have you subscribed to the channel and liked the video? If not, please do so now. We have an informative monthly newsletter. Do subscribe for it. And how can I not tell you about Bharata First's great success story, the Bharata First Knowledge Center? It is the one-stop destination for all your competitive exams needs. Hundreds are reaping the benefits. Make sure that you are not left behind. We now have 26 courses to address your learning needs, all available at less than 1,000 rupees per course as part of our ongoing early bird offer. What's more, the first 100 to register will get a further discount of 10%. So what are you waiting for? Register at kc.bharatafirst.com right now and get a part or rather be a part of this amazing way of learning. Don't miss out. All this information, along with some must see recommendations, are in the description of the video. Please go through it. And now, on to the discussion. The Delhi government has extended work from home for its employees and the ban on entry of trucks carrying non essential items till November 26 to combat air pollution. Schools and colleges will also remain shut according to the uh, directions of the Commission for Air Quality Management. Last week, the Delhi government acting on orders from the Commission for Air Quality Management issued 10 directions, including banning the entry of trucks carrying non-essential items and shutting schools and colleges. It had also prohibited construction activity and ordered employees to work from home till Sunday. Now, the construction activity has resumed. In this edition of Big Picture, we will analyze the issue of air pollution. Joining me on the program today are Professor C.K. Varshney, veteran environmentalist and former dean, School of Environmental Sciences, JNU. Also with me on the program, Polash Mukherjee, lead air quality, natural resources defense council, and uh, Dr. Arun Srivastav, assistant professor, School of Environmental Sciences, JNU. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of big picture. Professor Vashni, let me start the program with you first. You know, this seems to be a yearly trend. Every year, the air quality dips, air quality goes to severe conditions. Every year, we have a discussion on this subject. Nothing seems to change. You are absolutely right. In fact, it is not only that yearly event, but actually progressively, the air quality at this point of time is decreasing precipitously. And uh, you will find that this year it has been very, very serious. And uh, COVID and the air pollution put together is a very deadly combination. And uh, it is unfortunate that after really suffering from this air pollution episodes repeatedly for last 10 years, there has been no progress into this. Although a number of committees have been formed, but all of them have completely I should say, been sitting idle and doing nothing about it. In fact, the last hearing at the Supreme Court reveals very well that how much they are really paralyzed in terms of taking action. They are asking court to take action while they are themselves really <laughs> authorized to take and call for action. So you see this kind of a great hesitation is largely because that these issues are not taken seriously and the kind of seriousness they deserve. And it is very, very unfortunate that this kind of a suffering is being inflicted for the entire population of Delhi and without really any remedy in spite of all kinds of hue and cry and public outrage. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Srivastava, let me bring you to the picture now. You know, it's not like measures have not been taken. There are some measures that have been taken. I think there is one air pollution tower that is operational in uh, the neighboring city of Delhi, in Noida as well. And they are now looking at it closely and are saying that probably we should have more of these so step seven, and, and there's a plan of action in place, but yet this continues to be a problem, even, you know, like the professor has just mentioned for over a decade now, what, what is there a solution to this problem? Well, uh, it's true that uh, measures are being taken, but I don't think that uh, they are effective. And uh, as I presume that they're mostly just to fulfill the formalities, or just to buy, just to wash the eyes, you know, because if you consider the towers, as far as Delhi is concerned, <laughs> there are around twelve point five billion uh, million vehicles, 
almost 12.25 crore vehicles are there, registered vehicles in Delhi. Out of 2.5 million, uh, 25 million population. I'm sorry, it was 12.5 million vehicles out of 25 million population. So you can understand each two persons in Delhi has a vehicle, registered vehicle. And this is the number of registered vehicle. And there are many more vehicles that come from other cities, adjoining areas of Delhi. So you can understand the density of vehicular density in a city, which is, a, I mean, it can be considered as a city hosting over 25 million population and 12.5 million vehicles. So what will happen to the pollution? Definitely it will be released into the atmosphere. Atmosphere has a capacity. To some extent, it can, it can recirculate, it can dissolve, it can overcome the pollution emanating from various sources. But what I feel that the atmosphere is also to a level of its saturation or the speed by which it can actually dissolve the pollution, it is not being able to dissolve. Problem is that because of the various situations like onset of winter, especially during uh, October and November, when the atmosphere becomes quite stable. Quite stable means the, uh, the way pollutants should be dispersed into the atmosphere, it doesn't, it doesn't happen actually. So it gets accumulated into the atmosphere, although still atmosphere has its potential to dissolve it, to disperse it, but by the speed it is getting pollution, it is not able to disperse it. So this imbalance actually results into accumulation of pollution. And as far as remedies are concerned, yes, there are some remedies like uh, what I uh, gave you the numbers, the smoke towers, I think it cannot be more than three or four so far. One is in Kanat Pest, another is in somewhere East Delhi. And I don't remember where exactly there is station, but three, four smoke towers have been mounted and they are not capable enough to tackle this uh, huge amount of pollution being emitted. And now what I just said, that especially during this period, this pollution problem become very intense. One of the major reasons for is uh, that, that because of stubble burning, intense stubble burning, more or less from all the sides of Delhi, it is not only Punjab and Haryana, which is being named quite frequently, some places of Western UP, as well as some portions of Rajasthan. If you see the imageries of NASA that they have released on uh, about the uh, stubble burnings, around Delhi, you'll find more or less full red spots. It is almost, it has served, it has actually surrounded Delhi from all the sides. Right. And their number is in many thousands, the spots and those stubble burning spots are one day it was calculated to be around 87,000. So 87,000 farms are being burned just to remove the stubbles. 87,000 farms is a huge number. Unfortunately, because of the stable environment or the uh, lower level of inversion, Delhi starts acting like a sink, especially during this period. Sure. And those pollutants generated from other, I mean, stubble burning, they get accumulated over Delhi. And because of this, the smog problem it starts happening. The other remedy is what government has come, actually, I mean, state government possibly, the two other remedies uh, regarding uh, stubble burning, there were one was uh, uh, that they will be given some money so that they will not uh, they'll not burn. Instead, they will have some, I mean, some kind of uh, other uh, plans to remove it or to uproot it. But I don't know whether they actually it happened or not. Apart from that, government has also had also come with some plan that there will be some machine, some automatic machine that will be able to remove those stubbles. I mean, instead of burning it, that big machine is a very expensive machine and it is being imported from some other country that will be able to remove the stubbles. And although its uh, function is, functioning is expensive and the farmers cannot afford it efficiently, so government will give some subsidy right. so that the machines will be provided. But I don't know whether it is happening or not because it would have happened. 87,000 farms are wouldn't have, wouldn't have been burning present. I think day before yesterday or so, 87,000, the number of stable burning events in one day was 87,000. Perhaps that was peak. 
and i don't know whether it is stable now or it's going down but for entire month stable i mean this stable burning takes place and this is a very serious concern because points taken number, points yeah. taken uh, uh, arun sir also points taken we'll come back to, uh, and discuss okay. remedies and what more needs to be done in just a bit let me bring in polash mukherjee also into the picture now you know polash as far as uh, uh, the rules in are concerned you know uh, from as as of today uh, the construction activity that was stopped in delhi resumes and uh, you know uh, all it's slowly it seems life seems to be limping back uh, to normal but the condition outside still seems grave you still can't see beyond the point you can see the air pollution in front of your eyes your eyes burn breathing becomes difficult does this mean that the worst is over and that's why we are opening up again or uh, what 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 is the real what is the real picture Frank, it's very unfortunate that uh, for us relief is coming down from severe to very poor. We uh, we rejoice when we come down to very poor from severe, and that's the unfortunate state of the matter here that we have. I'd like to put across three points here. Firstly, is that uh, the air quality, the various sources of poor air quality in in Delhi and CR are twofold. One are the various sources that act through the year. and let let's not be under the impression that the rest of the year delhi has good air delhi has consistently across the year one of the worst air quality is in any capital city across the world it's just that during this period like dr shivasav explained it becomes so terrible that it is visible in the air so the smog becomes you know visible in the air so therefore the solutions have to be twofold one is to work on the sources that happen across the year and build a long term comprehensive plan for it and this has been underway in several ways and the second is to uh what are the things that need to be done on an emergency basis when the pollution peak takes place which is usually which starts from diwali and you know uh, definitely is a winter pollution peak so both these things need to be worked on now as far as your question about some of the measures being rolled back it's very unfortunate that we have rolled these measures back because we have come down from severe to very poor and uh, very poor seems to be an acceptable level for us uh, so that is one the other is that we need to approach solutions in a very scientific manner and i am saying this because unilaterally across the board i think smog towers and it's not just me a lot of people across the air pollution community think smog towers are absolutely unscientific you simply cannot suck the pollution out of the air or vacuum it out of the air it's essentially like putting an ac outdoors in summer to try and cool the entire colony or the entire city so it's an absolutely unscientific solution which in fact is a red herring because it gives you the impression that you know something is being done because you are putting in money and efforts towards setting up these towers but it does absolutely nothing so solution and we'll discuss it later in the show would be to work on reducing the sources attack the sources of emission uh, at the very source and not just trying to retrofit it later on right absolutely uh, professor vashne so since we are here and we are talking about solutions you know it's not like we have not tried out several measures we have tried but we are failing continuously year in and year out uh, is there a permanent solution to this problem because too much damage has already been done and it is already too late this should have been done at least a decade and a half ago now i will say that the measures that have been taken are absolutely inefficient unproved and have no scientific basis that's number one and the money that has been spent is really to my mind is total waste and uh, the test of the pudding is in its eating and we see that there are towers and they mean nothing in terms of controlling the air pollution or curbing it so this is a very nowhere in the world you will find that a city pollution has been controlled by such towers so i do not know that why they were installed in the first place and what is the scientific reasoning behind it is something that is completely uh, beyond any rationale from the scientific point of view this is number one second whatever little has been done is, is all palliative there is nothing which is curative and which really controls the emission of the pollution and you see the problem is not only delhi it is a regional problem where numbers the first thing should have been done to have a coordinating meeting between the neighboring states 
so that all of them can be brought on, on the table and there is a common platform and understanding. Because it is not only in Delhi, but even the entire North India is suffering from this problem. And thus the malice is much larger than what we see. Because uh, the, I can tell you that the kind of devegetation that has been done on Aravalis and the mining that is going on unabated and the, the brick cleans that are operating, which are using dirtiest possible fuel around Delhi. These are some of the things which are not been in picture and have not been controlled. Implementation extremely poor because there is a lack of political will. And it is true that as soon as the wind conditions and the climate improves or the weather improves, the situation becomes better and therefore everything is forgotten. So I think that first, the action starts very late. And secondly, that it is only very temporary to get over the hue and cry and then show that we are doing something and this and that. The fact of the matter is that one has to work the whole year to really work out the plan so that this kind of a situation doesn't arise. There is also a very important point which Polash has made and also Dr. Srivastav has made that it is the weather condition of the Delhi which need to be kept in mind. It's a master factor which really determines the intensity of the pollution. So my first submission would be that in NCR, the kind of the air pollution norms that have been prescribed for entire Delhi for ambient air need to be tightened up and there needs to be seasonally varying. This is number one, which means the industry has to really tighten their belt. And secondly, that small scale industries are not only in the defined industrial areas, but they are spread entire city and they need to be really looked into and analyzed and identified and they are made to really behave. And the third thing that I want to make, which always really obliterates our vision completely is that this kind of a pollution is actually uh, disproportionately penalizing the people of Delhi. The child, which are five year old, less than five year old and the elderly are far more severely affected than the average healthy person. And secondly, the poor people are far more affected than those who are having better means because they can really install a kind of air purifier in their homes. So the first thing that I will suggest, which might sound a little funny, that the sale of the air purifier to all those who are dealing with air pollution control should be prevented. They should be prevented to use this either in their office or in their home. Then they will realize that what the average public is suffering from. So I think this is number one that need to be done that most of the air pollution control related officers and bureaucrats should be prevented from buying and possessing in their office a kind of uh, equipment which are they are for controlling the air pollution in the room. This is number one. Now, this is not the important, but I'm just making a point just to realize them that what it means for average public. And secondly, the first thing is that there has to be large scale revegetation and which is also a very focused program of United Nations, which they are trying to really have for 10 years from 19 up to 2030, where re, I should say, vegetation of the ecosystem and rehabilitation of ecosystem is very, very important point because these have got multiple benefits which are provided to the society in various ways in providing new, I should say, not only health, but at the same time also the livelihood and many types of other advantages. So I am sure that a much larger view has to be taken, a larger and a different kind of expertise had to brought together to really give this problem a complete and a very holistic view. Because so far we are only analyzing in terms of that industries need to be tightened or the parali has to be stopped. Now these are not the major contributors. If you see the source apportionment, you will find a large number of particles are coming from outside. Now, unless this outside is stopped, unless the inside particles are stopped, the other factors are also contributing 
computing where their relative contribution is not as high. So sure. I am saying that if you see the roads of Delhi, they are dug all over the place and the loose soil is all over the place and the roads are full of dust. So I think the eddy currents that are formed as the transport Port moves, all these things are very important. We say that we have got a road cleaning machines, but where are they? Right. We say that we have got large number of trees which are planted. Where are they? Have been taking a real monitoring of these trees which are planted? Are they really in place? And the avenue trees are absolutely in shambles, except for NDMC area. You see in other localities, you will find there are hardly avenue trees available. So I think these are some of the things which need to be looked at. So it is not one thing. Many things have to be done together in a concerted way. And a proper plan has to be made by incorporating various persons, including agriculturists, which can suggest even a profitable agricultural model which can replace in some places the parali the question Absolutely. of having machines to unearth parali and to really collect them is all non practical because small holdings are many more and they just cannot afford it so i think all these things have to be taken into account on a small scale pilot scale it looks fine that we have got a, a concoction of microorganism which can really uh, uh, decompose that and the parali becomes a source of organic matter in the soil. These are fine, but on a large scale, on a practical scale, these are not very practical solutions. So Which I'm second. only saying that any particular prescription is not enough. And only one kind of a technological solution is not enough. There right. are many different kind of solutions which have to be put together in a many, many different and imaginative way to control this problem once forever, because it is going to be a permanent solution if we don't solve it. Absolutely. Points taken. Points very well taken. Yes, Palash, you wanted to make a point. Uh, yeah, I was just uh, just to add, I mean, just to add to Dr. what Dr. Vashnay was saying, a regional approach to things uh, is very essential. Uh, just to put a context here, Delhi by itself is less than 3% of NCR's geographical area. So let's, let's put that in context, 3%. And NCR itself is not the entire airshed. The airshed extends from Punjab and Haryana in the north all the way to Bihar and perhaps even West Bengal. The entire Indo-Gangetic plain is essentially a sink, like Dr. Shivasa spoke about. So there are various approaches to this. One significant step is the formation of the Commission for Air Quality Management in Delhi NCR and adjoining areas. Now, that is uh, why is it significant? It is significant because this commission is on paper empowered to take decisions for the entire airshed region, which in the past has been a problem. You know, getting together the political will and the coordination for Delhi, Haryana, UP and Punjab to act in coordination has been a, a tremendous challenge. And anybody living in Delhi, not just during air pollution, but if you read the newspapers any days, you can see that where the various tensions here lie. So uh, the commission, therefore, has been a significant step in that direction. However, like uh, I think Dr. Shivastav was talking about, in spite of being empowered, they have not really taken the significant measures that uh, that they should have. A. B is that there, is, there needs to be replication of what Delhi has done, uh, as an example, at the wider NCR level scale. Now, now, I've been speaking about this for the last four or five years. As early as the late 90s, which is close to 25 years ago now, uh, Delhi had, uh, had, had uh, banned the uh, establishment and operation of red category of industries, which is the worst, uh, uh, worst category of industries in terms of pollution potential from operation within its borders. What, has, what this has meant, and this is true for 25 years, is that these have relocated just outside the borders of Delhi. So they're there in Saibabad, in Ghaziabad, in Faridabad, in Bhewadi. And this is just talking about industrial pollution. So at the industrial pollution uh, policies level, these policies need to be replicated at the wider NCR scale. As far as the wider uh, year-long sources are uh, concerned, transport and power plants are very, very significant sources. Uh, as per the latest uh, source of pollution men studies that Dr. Varshini was mentioning, and within transport, one low-hanging fruit that uh, that exists is the urgent phase-out of older category of vehicles. 
now you you must have been reading about you know why uh, the supreme court has passed an order on 10 year old vehicle 15 year old vehicle it's not the age per se but the emission standard that is very important 10 years ago uh, was 2010 roughly speaking and in 2010 uh, bs4 came in so what the court is essentially saying is that any vehicle that is older than bs4 must be phased out of the streets and not just personal vehicles commercial vehicles are more significant here because commercial vehicles often have higher operation they run close to 100 120 kilometers per day whereas a personal vehicle will run just 30 kilometers so on an urgent basis in the next 3 to 6 months if the government uh, if the governments not just of delhi but delhi ncr i'm talking about up haryana punjab are able to remove these vehicles from operation either through an incentive scheme or through a mandate that would be a big step towards reducing the contribution of transport absolutely very valid points sir let's see how and when these things actually happen and if at all they happen because it's been a while now and still these measures are still work in progress talking about measures and uh, remedies uh, dr shivastav you are making a point uh, earlier as well about remedies and what needs to be done go ahead the floor is yours okay <clears throat> if you uh, uh, get the data of most polluted cities across the globe you'll find that out of 30 highly polluted cities across the world 21 are in india and out of 20 14 are in india most of them are in northern india so it is not the problem of delhi it is not uh, instantaneous or uh, uh, episodic problems like uh, stubble or crackers it is a major problem and will have to work intensively on a war footing rather i'll say there should be a nation wide approach to tackle this problem more or less all the northern Indi- indian cities whether they are class a i mean metro cities or class b or c cities if you consider allahabad banaras kanpur lucknow aqr aqif most of all these cities are in worst uh, level they are in the red zone most of the time especially during winter they are in red zone so it is a major problem and i feel that a nation wide approach should be there and uh, what uh, over the time the studies have also revealed that not only in delhi in other northern cities the major contributor of air pollutants is the particulate matters if you even see the aqi aqi is met by six different factors pm 2.5 pm 10 ozone nox socks and perhaps one more component that is benzene i do not exactly remember and if you uh, study these six if you have a track on these six uh, components you'll find the maximum contribution or which is in the worst zone or beyond the limit is pm 2.5 pm 2.5 is basically is a combustion product it is mainly generated from the vehicular sources and in uh, and other studies have also revealed that over 50% of the it is i mean some of the studies i am reporting to you they say that over 50% of the total pollution is contributed by vehicles in some studies it has been found that even 80% depending upon the specific areas or so so at least 60% or so we can say is contributed by vehicles so definitely we will have to put our focus on the vehicular problems if we solve it because what i feel especially in delhi you also travel on road you will see that more or less except after 10 o'clock in the night to early morning 6 or 7 o'clock traffic is smooth or more or less it is crawling so number of vehicles and their flow there are two major factors that one should actually concern upon one should work upon if we solve these two then i feel that to a large extent the problems can be i mean i won't say that it can be solved totally but yes it can be minimized if we are able to shift 25 to 30% of daily commuters because now it is only those people take the public transport system who do not have any other alternative if they are even capable to purchase a bike they prefer to go to have a bike instead of because we cannot rely upon we cannot rely the public transport system 
if anyhow we'll be able to shift 25 to 30 percent of the daily commuters to good public transport reliable public transport i feel that this will give a result this will end a result of reduction of particulate matters especially pm 2.5 by not less than 30 or 40 percent if we are able to manage traffic congestion to 50 percent i mean if can if it can be lowered by 50 percent traffic congestion which is more or less everywhere and at least from 9 a.m to 10 p.m in the night if we are able to manage the traffic congestion by 50 percent again we can solve the problem so if we focus on these two aspects i mean this especially this my statement is pertaining to delhi if we focus on these two aspects i am pretty sure that around 50 percent or so pm 2.5 can be reduced and if pm 2.5 can be reduced because nowadays it is more than 300 micrograms per meter cube its prescribed limit is 50 to 100 100 is maximum right so mostly it is above 300 micrograms per meter cube sometimes it's four more than four or 500 it's huge amount it is very dangerous to health as well so if we are able to solve it the major problem or major contributor of aqi will be resolved Absolutely. So our aim should be minimize or lower down the PM 2.5 concentration. And that can be achieved only by uh, putting our focus on vehicular transport, transport system, I mean, shifting to the public transport system, as well as lowering down the traffic congestion. True. Absolutely. Time to get quick closing comments now from all my panelists for the best way forward. Uh, Professor Vashti, let me start with you. And let's look at the immediate near future three things that you think that we need to do immediately right now? No, I think the first thing that we have to do is that we have to improve the road condition. This is number one. Because roads are absolutely in a shambles. And it is because of that the traffic is really a pro creates a problem. And second thing that we have to do is that we have to really encourage the transport shift from internal combustion engine to the EVs, which is taking place. And I think incentive must be provided. And the third thing that we must do, and we must really take into account also the tourist department along with, because the, you know, the economic cost of this pollution is very high. The tourists do not come in this season, which is Temperature wise is very favorable for them to go around, but because of the pollution, they hesitate to come. And it has got a tremendous economic impact. As regard the money goes to take the measures, I think money is not a problem because a lot of pollution cess is being collected by city of Delhi or the Delhi government. And all this money is sitting pretty. I mean, it is not being utilized. So the only thing is that there is a total bank corruption on a very proper and a workable plan how to control the pollution. And for that, I very strongly recommend that a multidisciplinary team must be there, which is a standing committee type of a function where they continuously monitor. And let me also make a point that the kind of data that is available is very weak. In fact, it is not very validated. And also the data on which we really try to do our measures or at least work out are very old because you must see that the 10 year old vehicles are being phased out completely. You can't drive a vehicle which is 10 year old and which is diesel driven. Immediately it is impounded because it is automatic. So I think that over the last two years, the situation is changing very dramatically in terms of the transport. A lot of EVs have come and many small goods transport are also being converted into electric already. So I think the kind of a situation that we are talking about the transport is very different. And very soon you will find that the EVs will come. But I can tell you that pollution load is not going to come because right. of two reasons. That the loose earth is a main problem. The road cleaning is another problem. And the third problem is that all around Delhi and even closer to Delhi, there is large number of you know, the, I should say degradation that is taking place of the vegetation, and the mining, sure. and illegal as well as legal mining of this uh, Badarpur and so on and so forth. So all this has to be controlled. 
And right. the third thing, which is most important and always really escapes is that the river is shrinking and therefore the sand on the banks becomes a major source of lifting the air particles, which are really providing a permanent backdrop of the air pollution. So I think all these things have to be taken into account, which normally so far has not been talked about in this context. And that Absolutely. is where that we are suffering from. Absolutely. Pulash? I would say in terms of three things to do, uh, immediate asks. The first would be, the first and the biggest source would be power plants. There are 2015, 2015 power plant standards which have still not been implemented across the country. This is not a Delhi only problem. Uh, so the central government really needs to come down on this and enforce the implementation of these power plant emission standards. The first. The second uh, is on transport. Uh, on transport, uh, I said, mentioned this earlier, if you are able to get the non-BS4 vehicles off the roads, that by itself would cause a very big, big move. So even if the government has to provide an incentive for this, you know, to uh, enable uh, private owners and fleet owners to upgrade to the newest BS6 or ideally electric uh, counterparts, that should be done. There is a 99% difference in BS4 and BS6 in terms of particulate matter emission potential. The third, and third is a little bit more long term, and Dr. Shivasta mentioned this earlier, is that pollution is not just a Delhi, Delhi problem. The National Clean Air Program, uh, along with the Finance Commission, has now provided funding for uh, air pollution interventions for uh, city governments across the country. So therefore, the third is from the governance perspective. The discussion that the four of us are having here is something that needs to, be, needs to happen at the level of every city. So therefore, there is a lot more need to, to uh, strengthen your institutional capacity at the level of the municipal corporation or even the state pollution control boards. There is need to hire more experts. There is need to create an air quality management team that, that looks at this problem through the year within the institution. You know, academics like ourselves or researchers like ourselves are working on this from the outside. But it is high time that the government creates the, creates the capacity within itself to effectively counter this in a medium and long term manner. Absolutely. And, and Dr. Srivastava, uh, close the show for us with your quick concluding remarks. Well, as far as the present day scenario is concerned, Delhi's pollution, because we started talking about that only. So the three points that I would mention to minimize or to mitigate their pollution is the number one is transport system. There should be a robust and reliable uh, transport system with incentives so that the public can significantly shift from their personal vehicles or Ola Uber or autos to the public transport system. If that public transport system is of EVs, electric vehicles, that will be much better. So this was number one. Number two, the traffic congestion. If the traffic congestion is minimized to even 50%, I mean lowered by 50%, this will give a give a big respite uh, as far as the pollution perspective is concerned. The third one is the stubble. A stubble burning should be totally stopped. According to me, at least the winter is stubble burning because they burn in the summer season also. This phase stubble burning should be completely stopped by force or by incentives, by any measures. If we work on these three, so I'm pretty sure that the problem, which actually every year's problem, especially during this uh, season, November, October, November, this will be, I mean, to large extent, this will be resolved. Perfect. All right, gentlemen, we'll have to leave to that. Thank you so much for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. So what's coming out of this discussion is that air pollution is a serious year-round problem. Unfortunately, we only wake up to it in this season. By then, too much damage has already been done. Several measures have been undertaken to address the problem, but they are not working since they are unscientific. They seem more like an eyewash. There is no single source that contributes to air pollution. Hence, the approach also needs to be a multi-pronged one, focusing on vehicular, industrial and agricultural pollution. Strict action should be taken against violators and a concerted year-long approach adopted. Before I go, let me once again remind you to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell icon and share the video as well. We have an informative monthly newsletter. Ensure that you subscribe to it. And 
Let me also tell you about the Bharata First Knowledge Center, our big success story. It is uh, the one-stop destination for all your competitive exams needs. Hundreds are reaping the benefits of the Knowledge Center. Make sure that you are not left behind. We now have 26 courses to address all your learning needs, all available at less than 1,000 rupees per course as part of our ongoing early bird offer. What's more, the first 100 to register will get a further discount of 10%. So what are you waiting for? Register at kc.bharatafirst.com right now and be a part of this amazing way of learning. Don't miss out. All this information along with some must-see recommendations are in the description of the video. Please go through it. That's it for me. See you again next time.